Hello and welcome back to The Wrexham Way. Hope you're all doing well and looking forward to today's episode where I am pretty excited to get the games played. We've got Newcastle United away from home in the league. They're very, very good in this game. So that might be a quite a tricky fixture. But after that, we have Aston Villa in the Carabao Cup quarterfinal. This is the best chance we've had to get to a semi-final and a final of a cup competition, which could potentially give us a shot of European football as well. We have to get past Aston Villa and they are currently level on point to those in the league table. So we are both performing very similarly this season. It's a winner-takes-all situation until the semi-final and the final. So, you know, not really winner-takes-all, I suppose, just yet. But I'm excited about it because it's a cup run and I feel like we should be pretty excited about it. Now, things have gone actually really well in between episodes. We'll talk about that in just a second. But make sure you do drop a like on the video for me. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Now, since you guys were last here for the win against Crystal Palace in the EFL Cup fourth round and then the 1-0 loss to Southampton, the own goal, very, very painful, we've actually gone on a really decent run of results, only losing one. We started off with a 1-0 win over Leeds United and that was when our stadium expansion was completed. Up to 12,500 seats. I think they took rid of the terracing and put seats in place instead. So 12,500 seats in the stadium. And as you can see, we're selling that out for every single home game. It was nice to reward the new crowd with a win there against Leeds United. We then had three games in a row, which we were quite unlucky to draw, I must say. Like a different day, we may have picked up the win in all of them. 2-2 against Cardiff, all the goals scored in the first 20 minutes of that game. That one actually was quite even, to be fair, and probably to deserve a draw. Tottenham, we were winning that game until the 73rd minute when Alan St. Maximin scored the goal for Tottenham to get them back in that game. Again, Tottenham played better, but, you know... It was one of those games which really we could have won if we just defended a little bit better for their goal. And then the game against West Ham, well, this one was frustrating. We took the lead early. Uh, Spadina sent off in the 45th minute and they scored in the 85th minute to level things up. Really, if Spadina didn't get sent off, that would have been a really good win for us. So, a bit frustrating in November. But we didn't lose a game. We picked up points. I think we can be pretty happy with it. We started off December, though, with a 4-1 loss to Everton. This was rather frustrating. Not particularly happy with this game or the way the team played. No one really reacted very well. But they did react well to the next couple of games. A 5-2 win against Brighton. The biggest win we've had this season so far. Was great to get so many goals on the score sheet at home against a struggling Brighton. And then, surprisingly, we beat Man United 1-0 away from home. This was a really good game for us where Man United dominated, deserved the win, but we had really good opportunities as you can see from our XG. We put one of them in the back of the net. Jan Patrick's growing that on his return to the team actually. He's been dropped recently, hasn't played very well, but did play pretty well in the most recent international break I believe. So he's been playing a little bit more and he got rewarded there with his goal at the end of the game to win it for us. So for the league table, things are looking pretty handy. 14th right now, 23 points on the board, level with Chelsea and Aston Villa. One point behind Leeds, two points behind Southampton and Everton, three points behind Tottenham and Brighton who are in seventh and eighth position. So a couple of decent results in our way. We could be in and amongst those European places, which is pretty mental. I don't think that will happen because, you know, there's a lot of football still to play for the rest of the season. It's very, very tight right now. Uh, there's actually quite a big gap between us and Leicester in 15th. So we seem pretty safe as we are in mid-table. It's just our goal difference is slightly letting us down in this situation. Now, Sione is scoring plenty of goals. He's up to 13 goals in 18 appearances for us this season. He's been absolutely fantastic. Really pleased with how he's playing and is well worth the £32,000 we're paying him per week. The issue with that, though, is that no one else is particularly scoring. Uh, Debbie on four goals. Uh, we've got Kevin Bell on four goals. Salom on three. Galbraith on three three and it's Rebergen interestingly who's only on the two goals. Last season he got nine in the league and ten assists. He's on track for more assists this season actually to be fair but the goals are drying up from him. So as we head into today's game against uh, Newcastle we are actually playing a bit of a rotated lineup for this game because we have three key suspensions to the team. Uh, Sequeira has picked up five yellow cards and is suspended for this game. He's been a very very solid tense back for us this season. Debbie Probably the best centre mid that we've been playing this season has picked up a suspension for five yellow cards as well. And then Rocco Spadina is back from suspension. It's not Spadina, it's Ostergaard who is suspended for this game as he is um, 
five yellow cards as well. So all the yellow cards sort of coming in that previous game, which was not ideal, but at least we got the win. That's the main thing. Missing these three players, though, we might not be getting the win against Newcastle today. We've got Schneller in goal. He's been absolutely superb this season, as you can see from his average ratings. Soon Tesic, which I think is still, probably not a properly say it, but better than I was saying it in previous episodes. Soon Tesic is starting at the left-back role with Cresswell, Kambwala, and Vinicius Tobias starting at right-back. He's been getting angry at me recently for not playing enough games, so he's going to play this one today has played pretty well when he has played to be fair uh, Bernal is coming into the CDM spot with Galbraith and Jan Patrick just in front of him Bell and Robergen stay on the wings and of course 13 goal Sione leads the line for us today so kickoff is upon us here today uh, away from home against the Newcastle team that of course have all of that money that they were given uh, from the uh, Saudi investment company I can't remember what it's actually called uh, precisely but obviously they've got a lot of money in game and they've spent it pretty well because this Newcastle team are routinely in European football now I don't think they've won a title but they are routinely you would maybe call them part of you know the big six seven something like that I'm not quite sure what you'd refer it to in this sort of universe but they are doing pretty well they have some good players and they have had some decent league performances so this is not a bad Newcastle team although they have just conceded a goal to us now Sione was well offside I don't think he interfered with play and it looks like the goal is going to stand. You love to see it. So Galbraith into Sun Tesic, which I'm still struggling to say. Yeah, Jan Patrick gets on there. Sione way offside, not interfering with play. Patrick gets on the end of it, chips the keeper in the back of the net. And for all the plaudits I just gave Newcastle, they're 1-0 down to us. And the best thing about it, it temporarily puts us up to 10th in the table. It just shows how tight that midfield battle is as Newcastle give the ball away to us. Bell puts a cross into Sione, who makes it 2-0. That was not offside, was it? I don't think it was. The referee running back to the centre circle. Wow. Two highlights in this game. Two goals. Things are going really well for us. That's a really poor throw there. And Bell just takes it on nicely. To be fair, I thought this cross was rubbish, but it turns out Sione was onto it. He gets his 14th of the season, and this team is just working really well right now. I think it maybe took a little bit of time for the players to click at the start of the season, but also we played some very difficult games at the start of the season. Uh, it was Man City, West Ham, Liverpool, maybe even Arsenal. We played in those first early games of the season, so the poor results at the start probably did reflect as not being as good as those teams, which is understandable. But really... The way we've sort of bounced back in the past two months or so has been brilliant. If we can keep this sort of form going as well, a Carabao Cup, it's not out of the question. It all depends on the look of the draw. And so far in the Carabao Cup this season, our look has been pretty nice when it comes to the draws. No real big hitters just yet, which has been quite nice. Uh, Galbraith on the ball out wide, though, gets the ball back and gets it back into some tense. I, got, I can't say his name. I don't know why I struggle with it so much. I just do. It's probably the accents that throw me off. But either way, we've scored a goal. Robergen in his third of the season. It goes all the way through the six-yard area. Newcastle defence switched off. We're 3-0 up. Sun Tesic. Sun Tesic. Sun Tesic. I can say that. I can say it, Tom. Also, by the way, you might have noticed that I've got a new chair. I've treated myself to a new chair. The old one had for like five years. So um, I thought it was overdue. A new one as... I mean, I think that may have been offside anyway for a free kick. But the way that Livkovic moved there... How did he move like that? As much as I love FM sometimes, there are a couple of little bugs in there, which I presume are just visual bugs, but um, I don't know. He had some superhuman movement there. So at least we're 3-0 up. We can't complain. If we were losing 3-0 and that happens, maybe I'd have some room to complain. As Robergen puts through Sione, who goes down, uh, doesn't win a free kick and loses possession. Newcastle clear it out from the back and win it. Uh, Luis Diaz brings the ball forward into his other strike partner who brings the ball out wide to Wambisaka. Wambisaka now can put this one into the middle and I mean we had some big issues at the other end when we scored our third goal. That was equally a terrible defensive issue from us to concede that goal but with 30 minutes to go, 3-1 up, I think we should still be pretty confident we're going to pick up the win here today. But this is a poor goal to concede. But again, we can, you know, take some solace that no clean sheet bonuses are going to be paid out, which is great. Um, because he's quite tired and on a yellow card, uh, some Tessic is going to come off for Rocco Spadina. We'll also bring Galbraith off. He's not played too well. Sandry's picked up a knock, but I think uh, a few minutes of football will do him a bit of good. And Kevin Bell, also quite tired. Let's bring Ewan on as well to play on the left-hand side of the pitch. So all three changes. Maybe a little bit risky to do that right now, but, you know, we're 3-1 up. I want some game time into those players, and I'm feeling pretty confident of how things are going. 
until we give away a penalty. Okay, I'm not so confident now. Not so confident now. Pavard went down, checking VAR. I think it was a pretty obvious penalty the way he went down. Penalty awarded, right. Come on. Let's make the save here, please, Schneller. Let's make the save. He's not. Let's maybe just drop down to positive. Uh, maybe let's just, you know, maybe dr drag these players back a little bit. I mean, you and can play there. Rebergen can't really. Maybe we'll just leave you up there a little bit as a inverted winger on support instead, potentially. Maybe just drop you guys to supportive roles, or one of you down for a supportive role. Sandry, probably better for the supportive role, actually, to be fair. Um, so maybe swap those guys over, and then Patrick on the attack a little bit more. Just slow the pace down a little bit. Let's time waste a little bit as well, um, because they're in the ascendancy now, are they, Newcastle? We don't want to con concede a third goal. Please don't concede a third goal, lads, as they look to bring it forward down the left-hand side of the pitch. I'm getting very nervous now. Has them on the ball, gets it out wide, puts a cross into the middle, shot, doesn't come away, goes out for a corner, which makes me worry that this is going to be a goal from the corner because that wasn't a very good highlight. Corner, swung into the middle, cleared, but only as far as Luis Diaz, back to the corner taker, into Bernal, who clears it. Good. Finish the highlight, please. Good. Right, let's just see the game out. See the game out, please. I don't want to concede a... Right, um... How's this happened? How, how has this suddenly happened? I don't... I don't really get it. Um... Right, let's just go back to what we were and try and just, you know, do what we did in the first half and, and score lots of goals, maybe. A bit more attacking... Let's shout demand more. Let's not concede a goal. Good, good, good. But the clearance only as far as Newcastle players as they look to bring the ball back into the area. I can't believe what we're seeing here. How we've lost that, I don't know. How we've lost that, I do not know. They've had five shots on target. You know, I thought I'd stopped all this jinxing, uh, particularly because I commentated on Lincoln City last night and we actually won. It's the third win in 14 games that I've seen commentating on Lincoln City. I've jinxed a lot of them. I thought I was over it. Well, let's just rest them all for two days because um, they started well. I think it was literally, we made subs at 3 and up, didn't we? It's the subs' fault. That's what I'm blaming it on. Not me, uh, their fault. Why does this always happen on an episode as well? Like, I, the game waits for me to just embarrass myself on an episode when I'm talking to you guys. At least it might make a funny TikTok um, or something like that, maybe. Right, a few players recently have been trying to get new contracts out of me. Uh, Ostergaard, the latest in the line of new contracts being wanted. And to be fair, he probably does deserve one. He has been, uh, over the past two seasons or so, uh, one of our better players. Um, basically a seven rating last season. This season has been a heartbeat in the midfield. Five assists and two goals as well. Really stepping his goal contributions up this season so far. I do like him quite a lot as a player. Young, potential capped for, Dan Dan for Dan Denmark, Denmark I mean to say, um, you know what, I think that's fair enough, I think it's fair enough, he wants more money obviously, now he's got a contract in for until 32, oh my god, maybe I should have just tried to talk him out of that one potentially, um, let's change to a regular starter, let's not make him too happy right now, oh he wants, he wants the world, important player then, on 37 grand a week, he's currently on 15. If we can bring this down to like the 25 sort of range for an extra year, that would seem pretty handy to me. Uh, let's get rid of a release fee clause. Keep the relegation one because I don't think we shouldn't be getting relegated really. Remove a lot of these. He's not going to like this at all. And he hates it so much he wants 45 grand a week now. Um, I wouldn't mind doubling his wages to 30. I don't think he's going to want anything less than like 35 though. I'm just going to keep, he wants 36. Let's say 31. Doesn't like it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I'm not going to, he'll be crossing me, won't he? I suppose. 
because he'll say that I've not offered him a contract when I have done, but you don't know. Also, it's a shame things never quite worked out for Tyson Allen at Brentford. Just got a scout report coming through for him, and he was like the big talent that we had. And I think if he'd stayed at the club, he would have been that big talent. Um, he has played games in the Premier League and is playing not very frequently in the Championship right now for them. I do feel bad. I think if he'd stayed with us, I think Brentford ruined him, if I'm honest with you. I'm sorry, Tyson. But we can't dwell on past issues and stuff like that. We need to focus on the games at hand. And the game at hand is this Aston Villa game. Now, you can see what I mean when I say we've been very lucky with the draws because all the other teams in it uh, should thrash us. So we've been very lucky in the draw to get Aston Villa. As for the team, do I want to make changes? Uh, the answer to that is yes, I would quite like to make some changes. I think we need to bring back onto the pitch Sequeira. He's going to come back on the pitch uh, to play in that left centre-back role. Uh, Debbie will definitely come onto the bench, I think, instead of Josh Tymon. Ostergaard definitely onto the pitch, although Galbraith has played quite well. Maybe let's give Jan Patrick a little rest for this game. Bring Ostergaard back on. Um, although Bernal's not played particularly well. Maybe swap those two over. And then we'll bring Debbie back onto the pitch. He's got a left foot, hasn't he? Galbraith has a left foot, but not as good as Debbie's left foot. So let's swap those two over. So slight changes to the team there. So as kickoff is upon us here today, we know we can score goals. That's not an issue. We know we can score goals. We, we also know we can actually concede goals, hence the last game as well. But away from home against Villa here, I think we could be onto something. If we get through to the semi-finals of the Cup, that's a monumental achievement. But of course, that's when things will uh, maybe change away from our favour a little bit as we take on some better teams in the semi-finals. Uh, anyway, kickoff is upon us. We are 11 minutes into this game and the first highlight is coming towards us right now as Cambuala on the ball looks to bring it forward and out of the defence, out wide to Vinicius Tobias already on a yellow card. He finds Rebergen, who then finds Debbie over the top and Debbie... Oh, can't quite get the shot on target. Very unlucky. So far, though, in the first 30 minutes of this game, we have nullified any Aston Villa threat. They are yet to have a single shot in this game. So watch us go 3 0 up and lose it 4 3 in a minute's time. I'm sure that'll happen. Uh, I, can, I can guarantee it. I'm rattled by that Newcastle game. I'm rattled. But as we approach half time here, um, things are very boring, apart from this one corner, which is somehow not in the back. Somehow not in the back of the net. I can't quite explain the sequence of events there. I think, again, I feel like Schneller moved a bit weirdly. Like, glitching out a little bit. We've seen that twice in today's episode now. But it helped us out this time, so let's not worry too much about it. Into the dressing room then. Thrash the arms, not good enough. We need to get out there and secure the win. Now, we are dominating the match. Possession shots, everything right now. Hopefully we can turn that domination into goals in this second half. As Vinicius Tobias looks to swing a ball into the middle. Sione's there, brought down. Surely that is a penalty. The referee is pointing to the spot, looking at the VAR. The VAR surely must be saying yes to this one because Sione went down. You know, he went down. So penalty, surely, easy. Right, Sione to take the penalty then that he has won. Can he give us the lead in this cup tie? He can. He can. You love to see it. Also, 15 goals in all competitions for us so far this season. He is having a very good year. I would be surprised if there aren't bids for him at some point this season in January or potentially more likely summer, I would imagine. I can't remember if he's got a release fee clause or not. It might just be a release fee clause, which I said weirdly the first time, uh, if we get relegated, but I can't fully remember. We'll check it out after this game. In the meantime... Aston Villa looking to react to the goal that they conceded. And... I mean, Vinicius Tobias. He... He's crossed that in for them. Like, watch, watch him here. Watch him here. He slide tackles but puts a cross into the middle for Darwin. We really do not help ourselves. Last episode, we had an own goal, didn't we, from Cambuala. This episode, we've had that from uh, Vinicius. We also, in the previous game, probably had a few issues from Schneller as well. I think Schneller probably in the previous game uh, was at fault for a couple of those goals too. We really just don't help ourselves sometimes. And now with 10 minutes to go, 
we need to make some changes. Robergen tired, not playing well. Uh, Lucio is going to come on to the pitch instead. Um, Spadina will also come on. And maybe even actually Gabriel Salom up front too, because Sione has not played particularly well today, despite getting his goal from the penalty spot. So 10 minutes to go. I'm going to shout demand more. Let's see if we can just grab a goal at the end of this game. As Please no. Please no. Get your bottles out, everyone. Get your bottles out. This is... I don't want to put this on the internet. I don't want to put this on the internet. It's it's embarrassing for me. I can't believe... I can't believe... We've thrown away two games easily. And it's all been our own fault. It's not that the other teams were good. They weren't. I guess it's just the way football is sometimes, isn't it? It's just... We just don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. Ah, oh, we should have had two wins today, easily. And it all goes wrong when I make substitutes. That's it. No more subs allowed, ever. Not make any more subs at all. Also, Sione, uh, contract info. He has got a release fee clause for clubs in a continental competition of 22 million. Ah, right. So clubs could be interested then. Do we offer him a new contract? Star player. That's fine by me. Let's try and get him important. He wants star. Okay, well, that's fine because you are our star striker. £61,000 a week, though. Highest earner right now is Sandri on 37. That's actually a stupid amount of money, to be fair. Um, how do we get back on to Sione, please? Where is he? Sione, where are you? I need to offer you that contract again. So we've got rid of the release fee clauses. We need to bring this down close to, like, 40000 I'm happy to be the, t the top earner at the club, but we need him to... Um, Oh, this is not going to be nice, is it? This is going to be a big contract, but I think it's probably worth it to protect our own interests, despite the price of it. We'll sort of give him what he wants, but the wage is the biggest thing for me. We need to bring this wage down. 42 and a half. He wants more. 45. It's only a £12,000 increase, to be fair. He was already a top earner, but I think it's important to not lose him for 22 million. When he is worth more than that, isn't he, right now? Sione. He's worth, well, 22 at the top point, right? New contract will be worth more than that. Okay. I, I think I think that's important to do. So, um, some blots on our record then this past month, despite the, the good results. To be fair, actually, you say it's been good. We've only won three games since last episode. Um, we just haven't lost all that many. So we're not winning that many, but we're all, uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe I was a bit more optimistic heading into today's episode about how we actually are. But again, we were three up, should not have lost it. We were one up, should not have lost it. It was stupid mistakes that we gave away a free kick and a stupid cross to our own area. Like, it's frustrating. I reckon next episode, though, we come back for Liverpool and we come back for Bournemouth at the end of January. Um, we might make a few signings. We have got money to spend. We have got, if we look at the bank balance, 21 million. There are certainly a lot of young players with five-star potential that we've got scouted at that we could look to bring into the club. So I think that's maybe what we're going to try and do this coming uh, January to bring some good youngsters in. But until then, thank you very much for watching. Um, please don't be too harsh on me in the comment section today. I mean, that was an embarrassing one, really. Um, I probably deserve it, I suppose, maybe. But... <laughs> Those results were not handy at all. But if you did enjoy today's episode and my paid, make sure you do drop a like on the video for me. Subscribe for me around here. Leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. And I will see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye.